This QRadar demo shows how an out-of-the-box implementation can identify cybersecurity and internal threats using machine learning and behavior analytics. Many security and SOC tasks you are performing manually today, can be automated and done much more accurately. Let's look at this dashboard, here we see many offenses QRadar has identified as threats you likely haven't been looking for. This offense was triggered by over 6,000 events. And instead of shooting off over 6,000 alerts, QRadar consolidated the events because they all have a common identifier. The common key identifier of this offense and for all these events, was a source IP. The key identifier that triggers an offense can be anything, username, email, chat IDs, length of time, host name, HTTP analysis, DNS queries, file sizes, names, types, entropy, hash, and other suspect criteria. Any unique or common criteria that can be isolated and tie events to a threat, can be represented here in QRadar's rules. You can view the details of all the rules that got triggered and see why QRadar has created this offense, Metasploit PS exec, excessive usage of system tools, PowerShell with encoded commands, executables running create processes from temp directory, DLL hijacking, credential dumping, things are clearly happening on this system you probably didn't notice, which clearly indicate it has been compromised. QRadar works with all log sources, not just event logs. It also analyzes network flows, such as scanners and other devices sending packet information. In this offense we see 8,300 events that have been correlated, and 36,433 network flows that contributed to its threat credibility. Someone scanning your internal network, isn't going to be captured in an event log. But network flows do, such as IP addresses from pings into your network. Sending flows to QRadar allows packet information and payloads to be included for analysis. QRadar includes a vulnerability scanner that can do deep packet inspection of application level network flow data that can detect threats that don't have signatures, or identify and correct non-compliant behavior of applications not using standard ports or unencrypted protocols. And you can send flows from your own scanners as well. This particular offense only has 20 events and 450 flows, but QRadar was able to detect a file hash that made it through the network, the file hash was discovered by the FishMe thread feed. So how was QRadar able to connect all these dots and discover this? That's a good question, so let's discuss the QRadar app exchange real quick. QRadar has a lot of built-in rules out of the box, but it can also import security intelligence from external threat feeds, such as IBM's X-Force Threat Intelligence which is a free feed that provides data sets or indicators of compromise like hashes, bad web and IP addresses, which populate and updates QRadar tables and rules. This is the App Exchange, which has a lot of vendor and business partner apps which have their own cybersecurity experts and can feed context and intelligence to your QRadar SIM. Look at this list. Cisco, Carbon Black, VMware, Palo Alto Networks, Symantec, McAfee, ServiceNow, Amazon, Juniper, IBM Watson, Microsoft, Fortinet, and here is the FishMe intelligence app that we saw earlier. If you're not aware, FishMe is dedicated to identifying the latest phishing, malware, and attachment type threats that require constant monitoring. The FishMe app gathers all the indicators of compromise required to investigate these threats and feeds this intelligence into QRadar. Let's go into the admin tab and the reference set management which is a list of tables that QRadar uses. We can look at the FishMe reference set. This list of tables is kept up to date daily by FishMe if you have their app installed. And you can see, some of this intelligence data includes hashes. And if you remember, that last offense identified by FishMe was a hash. So someone obviously sent something malicious into the network to be targeted. QRadar can get hashes from many different sources, like an app you have downloaded from the App Exchange, like Sysmon, Carbon Black, or maybe from QRadar's Network Insights module. There are many sources that QRadar can utilize and feed your console with rules and alerts which you could not possibly do all yourself. In this case, 
it was the QNI that assisted in the discovery of this offense, by calculating the hashes as the files came into the network, which encompasses over 40 key fields that are part of the payload, not the flows or logs, but found inside the payload to discover things you had no clue were occurring on your network. All those apps you saw earlier are not just providing rules and intelligence data for QRadar, those applications also have features specific to their product or service that gets integrated into the QRadar console for you to use. This installation happens to have big fix for software patch management and carbon black. If you own these tools, you should download them so you can have these integration features. By clicking on that IP, I can perform a search within Carbon Black without actually leaving QRadar and see other details that Carbon Black provides. Or use Big Fix to see what patches are installed on this system, what files have changed in the last 30 days on that system and the file hashes of each of them. A great wealth of information is made very quick and simple to access. You probably have security tools you heavily rely on, and QRadar likely has an app that you can download and integrate into your SIM. There are many features in QRadar that simplify and automate tasks for you. Or perhaps you have Amazon or Microsoft Cloud Logs that you want to send to your SIM, just download the app. Let's look at this offense destination vulnerable to detected exploit from an SMB attack. How does QRadar know this? QRadar can be fed the data from your vulnerability scanner and from your IPS, or the scanner included with QRadar. Your vulnerability scanners have no way of knowing when something is under attack, but your IPS knows what is under attack. QRadar reads both logs and automatically connects the dots for you, which triggers rules like this one. The QRadar license includes a few other very powerful apps which you should be aware of. For instance, the free user behavior analytics app. It monitors and analyzes event logs and flows generated by your users which are pulled in from Active Directory or LDAP, and assigns them a risk score based on all the risky actions and places they have been. All the skeletons in their closet are inventoried, where QRadar may pull up to associate with future incidents or offenses discovered. The UBA app detects detect anomalous user behavior whether they fell victim to an attack or maliciously trying to cause harm. The app delivers out-of-the-box rules and algorithms that feed QRadar's advanced analytics engine. Thresholds can trigger an alert when a risk score exceeds a specified level. You can drill into users' risky behaviors, go back into the user's history and look at a specified time, dive into spikes for a particular day and hour. Here we can see someone from China and other places was trying to guess his credentials using the UBA app. One of the most helpful apps in the app exchange is the Watson Advisor. You will likely only use this powerful resource in complicated situations when you just can't connect the dots and see the underlying source of the threat. Let's look at this particular offense. It only consists of two events. On the surface this does not look critical. So why did QRadar flag this as an offense? So. I submitted this offense to Watson to hopefully shed some light on this offense. If you read below, Watson has provided a threat assessment. He gathers insights from millions of external sources as well uses local data mining. In this offense, the ugly guerrilla campaign is the primary suspect which uses tsunami and smoke loader malware. Watson also provided a graphical map of the origins and correspondence from across the globe that was directly involved in the attack and shows historical data related to this threat to your organization. Up top, we can see the user's IP address where the gray traffic flow starts with user account is Desert Falcon. He went to this URL from that IP address. Watson also applies cognitive reasoning to build relationships among other discovered threat entities, and associates them to the original incidents such as malicious files, rogue entities, insider threats, and other criteria. You can zoom in and out to see the big picture, but let's look at where it all started. You can also see other traffic represented by other traffic flow colors. The blue traffic is what QRadar has seen related to past known threats and offenses where Desert Falcon visited previously. If you zoom out, you can also see another known threat actor involved called the Ugly Gorilla which has been attacking your network. 
All this data is captured and stored in QRadar tables to be used with reference sets like what we saw earlier. If we zoom out, we can see something else very interesting. QRadar went back into the historical log data, and discovered there are two more employees, Jenny Davin and Ray Karen, that were attacked by this tsunami malware we see here. These are just a few examples that illustrate how QRadar can simplify the daily lives of security analysts and SOC operators. Please contact us if you have additional questions, would like pricing or to schedule a live demonstration focused on your specific requirements. We can also arrange a proof of concept evaluation. The QRadar SIM is available for purchase as an appliance, software license and for customer provided VMware environments. QRadar SIM also available in the cloud, security as a service and hosted managed SIM service offerings. Thank you for your time today.